Mirashi Heritage Management is an archiving and research firm with a team of archivists, researchers, consultants, and heritage enthusiasts. We preserve, document, and exhibit hidden treasures, undocumented stories, and untold experiences, providing inheritors and the audience the opportunity to collect and reconnect with legacies, instilling a sense of pride. We specialize in legacy building, documentation of inheritance, conduct archival research, undertake oral history projects, provide curatorial assistance, and preserve heritage material. Bringing to you today's talk, I would take this opportunity to introduce the speaker of the day. Sitting behind temple elephants, nursing wounded puppies, Working with various theater groups, Vikram Sridhar is a performance storyteller and theater practitioner, combining his various interests and work over 20 years in theater, conservation, and social work. Based in Bangalore and Chennai, he has extensively traveled the country performing, facilitating workshops, and speaking at schools, corporates, business conferences, literary and cultural festivals for children, as well as adults. He believes in the Desi way of storytelling as a strong medium of conservation from nature to human relationships and strongly believes a story a day keeps the doctor away, not an apple. While many of you must have received the summary of the talk, I would briefly set the context here. A collection of tales that we have heard right from our childhood, the Panchatantra. Many a times, is assumed to just be a collection of animal tales for children. The many layers of the numerous stories in the many layers of the numerous stories in this five-part treatise is rich in allegory on internal personal relationship, strategy, ethology, heritage, and folklore. This perhaps is the main reason for the Panchatantra to have traveled through cultures, languages, and geography, and over time has produced innumerable literary works. The talk will trace the beginnings of the Panchatantra and its global journey chapter by chapter and into stories we would have hardly explored, thereby making it one of the richest texts in the Indian origins. I now request Mr. Vikram Sridhar to address the audience. Thanks. Thanks, Rohini. And uh, hi, everybody. A very good uh, evening, morning, afternoon to whichever part of the world that you're joining in from. And uh, if you can hear me and uh, watch me, all I'm going to ask is, what do you all have for lunch? Put that in the chat. You see, in India, we don't start stories by once upon a time. We ask... What did you eat? Did you have a good day? Because if you don't have a good meal, you can't listen to stories. So we're talking about stories of stories. So put it in the chat. What do you all have? The last meal, was it a breakfast or a brunch or a lunch? Dal, chicken, rice and water. Others, go on, go on, go on. I'm sure you can't Google this answer. Some answers can't be Googled. And these are your stories that only you know. Dosa, poha and coffee for breakfast. Dosa. Dosa with what? Because dosa is always the curry which makes the main dish. Like somebody said, curry also comes from India. The word, especially in southern India. Lovely. Curry and rice. Beautiful. Kimchi. Awesome. So as we slowly go in, the next question I'm going to ask you is, can you think of one bird or animal that you watched recently? If you remember the bird or the animal, not on the television, but something around you, somewhere around you, or if not an animal or a bird that you connect to, keep them with you as we travel these stories, which have as much as we know and as much as we don't know. Beautiful. And for that, like any other works of, um, that's, happening today. I'm going to do this thing called presentation, but nothing presentation is only to trigger a conversation. So if you can see my screen, um, give me a thumbs up, say yes. 
Oh, I can't see the chat if it is on. Okay. 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 Can somebody confirm that the presentation is visible? Yes, sir. It's visible. Awesome. Why is it called many journeys with Panchatantra? Like, I mean, any other journey, nobody knows the journey of the Panchatantra. That's the beauty of it. I'm going to start with a disclaimer saying, nobody in the world, even the academic scholars, and I'm going to not come from an academic space, I'm going to come from a performative space of exploring, because as a practitioner in India, stories have to be practiced in the public domain. So I, as a practitioner of tales, and I'm going to bring it to you slowly and steadily and travel along with me. And like I said, don't forget to keep the animal or bird with you as we go forward. What did you all have for, what do you all like to drink? Do you like the right drink or the left drink? What drink do we all like? Do we like the coffee or the chai? Put in the chat so that we have our preferences, right? A dark coffee or a tea without milk or a tea with a flour or a coffee which is extremely high on milk and so on and so forth. Hmm. And if you can smell that coffee or the tea that you love, keep that close to you as we go forward. And the beauty of Google Meet is, I don't know what you're going to answer, but I'm assuming you're answering. And we go on slowly. Because, but are these the only drinks in the world? There are many more outside this. And so is that journey. I'm going to play a video and see if you can connect to it, if you watched it or not watched it. Uh, the video is not visible. Oh, uh, sir, the slide hasn't changed. One second. Now. Uh, no, sir, not as of yet. That's okay. Can you all name your favorite cartoon? You all, do you all, do you all see cartoons? You all see cartoons. If you see, if you all see cartoons and watch cartoons, remember, can you name, name me one cartoon that you all can remember out of your mind? immediately in three seconds the cartoon that you watch with your friends you watched with your um, family your relatives universal yeah tom and jerry doraemon tom and jerry just you wait lovely be blade go on go on go on because some of it will be common that's the beauty of some of the chota beam lovely and if you look at these cartoons somewhere you will find what's common between these cartoons are characters of animals and birds and these cartoons stick to us for a long time and what is Panchatantra to do with Tom and Jerry and these cartoons come along so let me see if again the slides are visible can you see the screen now Yes, sir. The screen is visible. Awesome. So how many of you, you remember you enter a bookstore, one of the best bookstores in India or the world, um, and you go to the Indian section, you will, the first thing that welcomes you is this large table which says, timeless tales from the Panchatantra, tales of wisdom from the Panchatantra, Panchatantra stories, and the best of Panchatantra, and the treasure of tales from so, the Yeah. So sorry to interrupt you, but the slideshow is not visible, sir. We can see the main screen. Google Meet ka problem hai. Pata nahi. That's okay. This is generally with all, many meetings I've had in Google Meet. It takes its own time. So when you enter a bookstore, can you give me a yes if you've seen this in many bookstores? The first thing that section that welcomes you is this slide with, or the table that says many panchatantra 365 days panchatantra 305000 days of panchatantra and that sort of started my trigger for the day and with that started another trigger as i started traveling across the country if you go to bombay and if you go to a museum in bombay 
and you enter the Bombay Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Sangralia Museum, there'll be one section which says that here lies the oldest copy of the Panchatantra. And that, to me, was the second trigger. And then there is a third trigger, which is if you go to many temples in India, especially Hampi, Patadakal, Mahabalipuram, and to the largest of temple complex, you will see architecture which is fused in animal motives. And some of these animal motives will be fused so beautifully, so beautifully that when you look closer, you might not know if it's an elephant or is it a bull. Some say, many say, is the Vrishabha Kunjara. And that's one of the three motives that's always present in Indian architecture and Indian temples especially. One are the narratives of the Mahabharata, they say. One is the Ramayana and from the Puranas and the Itihasas. And the next is the tales of animals and birds which somewhere come from the Panchatantra and the other tales. And these will exhibit brilliant architecture by the sculptors and it will have nuances that no architecture school even today can teach us. That's the trigger number three. On the fourth is, I hope I can show you this. A few years back in 2018, there was the Iranian prime minister who came to India. And when the Iranian prime minister came to India and the Iranian prime minister met prime minister Man Narendra Modi on the 17th of February, he gifted the Prime Minister two books and both were translations of texts which originated in India. One was the Mahabharata and the second was Panchatantra. The book on Panchatantra was in Pahelvi or the translation in Iranian and the Iranian Prime Minister gifting it to the Indian Prime Minister Rouhani the Prime Prime Minister, Narendra Modi receiving it, Kalilava Dimna, a Farsi translation of the Panchatantra. It had traveled and it's coming back to India. Why, how, what? And let me see if I can do that. And as I digged a little deeper, the question that arose were, 200 versions of this text has been translated in 50 non-Indian languages before 570 AD, the origin starts. And it's influenced the Arabian Nights. It's influenced the French La Fontaine tales and many such tales. And most importantly, it's influenced what we call the frame structure of stories. And this frame structure of stories, I'm going to try once more presenting and let's see if that works. Do you see? So it's visible, but it's better if you present your entire screen itself, then you won't face an issue. It's not moving if I do the entire screen right now. Do you see the table here? So increase the size of the, of your PPT. Pardon me? Increase the size, sir. It's a full screen. Size ko bada ki ji, agar aap individual PDF nahi so kar pa raha hai to. Nei, nei, ye bada hai, full screen. Sir, aap kya pura slide show present kar raha hai? Yeah. Because, sir, we can see the main screen. Okay, this is a Google Meet ka problem. So this is not my problem. Uh, issue thing because it happens in Google Meet whenever you uh, do that. So let's see. So I, I won't do a full screen. Let's see one second. I'll do one last time. Let's see if this works. Okay. 
Okay, let me go on, go on. Okay. So the Panchatantra, as they say, has languages like Latin, German, Italian, French, English, and titles that range across the country. The authors range from John Capua, Antonius Vaughan, before Antonio Francisco Doni, Galland and Sir Thomas, not in many languages. So I was wondering, what is this Panchatantra? Why is this Panchatantra? Where, have, where all has it traveled? And to understand many of the Indian texts, to understand why and how, it's important to understand that the Indian text stands on four pillars. And these four pillars are what we say, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. And these four are common across many Indic texts that travel over time. You take the Jatakas, you take the Hitopadesha, you take the many Ram Katas and the Beni Parvas of the Mahabharata, especially the Shanti Parva, where it's filled with fables and stories. And there you will find these animals and birds coming and talking to us in characters directly and indirectly. Hmm. But where did the Panchatantra start? I'm going to take a pause and see if, uh, again, I'm going to try the presentation to see if it works. I'm sorry for this. I, I mean, I have no... Neha, if you can help me with that or something, help me know. I've sent it to you already. If you can see the screen now. If you can see. No. Now? Yes, sir, it's visible now. Wow. So do you see once upon a time? Yeah. Awesome. So that's the Jugad of Google Meet. Thank you for your patience and thank you for waiting a lot. So like I said, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Keep these as we go into the stories because these four somewhere are the layers on which the tales are sitting. Once upon a time, somewhere in Iran, they lived a king. Kusro Anu Suryan, they say his name was. And this king was a king of valor, a king who loved the people, a king who had many, 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 many subjects. And he used to give lectures and people used to throng him every day. And you see, when, especially when you are in the highest of power, you don't get a paid leave. You can't take off from work because there are people who are watching you, the people who are waiting for you. What is a Saturday? What is a Sunday? And when you fall sick, it's big news. And when this big news happened, that the king was not well, it traveled across the country and every physician started coming and looked and watched and gave suggestion to the king because the king couldn't stop coughing because he was sick. And he was so sick that no medication worked. Until a time a bird told the ruler, that maybe the medicine for your illness sits far east in a country which was called, which is called Bharatadesha or today's larger India. Well, a king can't get up and travel, so he sends his physician, some say his minister or the prime minister, Burzo. And Burzo traveled across from Persia on his vehicle. He tiptoed and he reached the country but a country which speaks so many thousands and thousands of languages a country which has snow and sand where do you find this medicine for the illness of the ruler so burzo went everywhere asking where can i find it where is this medicine and somebody pointed him to a hill and everyone who was uh, were, were telling him said that you need to go to the mountains because in the mountains there are 
special herbs that could cure your king. He went. And again, everywhere they just pointed and some laughed and some didn't give an answer. And everybody had the same answer saying, ha, 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 you don't understand what is the Rasayana in our country. He was asking for the Rasayana. And some say it's a Sanjeevani he was asking. And some say, well, it's a secret herb. And in a Persian epic, it says, today I was just pursuing producing the book on the Indians. It was written there that in the Himalayas, some grass grows, which is as valuable as a Roman silk. When it is massaged on the dead, the dead undoubtedly starts to speak in no time. But as it turned out, not a single dead could be revived with that grass. And it turned out ineffective. Right. So which means it's not a physical grass. And so he searched and searched and somebody again pointed him no, 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 no. This is not a country. This, in this country, there are no boundaries. And here are the high mountains where the wise and the learned men of lofty intellect, the trees and the herbs, the virtuous writings, and the wisdom extracted from these writings, the elixir of life that revived the dead intelligence and buried thoughts of the ignorant and unlearned. And so Burzo was like, wait. So I don't get this in a grass. I don't get this in medicine. Where do I get them? indirectly meant in in this landscape the herb was stories the stories people told each other the stories humans sat and exchanged with each other okay where do i find them and he said we need to go hmm, to a place where these stories are exchanged and that was a place that burzo started to travel next and he traveled on foot he traveled on vehicles and took what we call hitchhiking today he took many transport and well even if you don't know the language moment you put your fingers and a hand out somebody might trust you and give you a right and burzo went to what he learned was a school was a space of language and exchanges and he went there and he was stunned to see that people were talking to each other. He said, what? This is the Rasayan I'm searching for. And Burzo went into one such structure and sat down. And he sat down and started listening. Well, again, the, the narrative structure, story within a story, began again. And the story again goes back, they say, once upon a time, there lived a king and the king's name was Amara Shakti. And Amara Shakti was this name of the king and Amara Shakti had three sons, Vasu, Ugra and Ananta. Like many words in Sanskrit, which can't be translated into English, these words need to be felt with emotion and consciousness and three qualities or three sons Vasu, Ugra and Anant and the king was having sleepless nights because none of them were, was even equipped the 5 to 10 percent to even take up the responsibility of the country and the king was sweating so much and he called the ministers he called advisors and everybody came and told them told him that, well, you can't teach everything to these grown-up children because it'll take a lifetime. You can't teach them Itihasas, you can't teach the Puranas, you can't teach the Vedas, you can't teach the Mahabharata, Ramayana. Everything cannot be taught because it's time consuming. And the king said, what do I do now? And one minister came in front and whose name was Sumati, they say, and said, well, I think you need to talk to Vishnu Sharma. And Vishnu Sharma was his name and Vishnu Sharma was called white beard and white hair and nearing his 80s. Vishnu Sharma took the travel and came and sat down and spoke to the king. And he asked, what do you want, king? And the king said, I want my children to be equipped with Rajan Dharma, Rajaniti and everything to do with ruling. And they need to understand the literature of this country. And uh, can you do this in a short time? 
or what we say fast track time and vishnu sharma looked and said hmm i'll try but i can't promise give me 6 months i'll see what i can do and the king said what what takes 12 years at least you can finish in 6 months crash course i will give you whatever you ask for if you can make these children equipped and vishnu sharma looked and said in this country knowledge doesn't have a price or king that's your lesson and vishnu sharma they say could be chanakya could be learned like the word vishnu and sharma what it means is left interpretation vishnu sharma took the three children vasu ugran ananta and again went to a hill maybe the hill that burzo went and explored and he took them to the hill again and made them sat and sat them down and started his lesson and he divided his lesson six months into five chapters five chapters and he again started once upon a time well of all the works of indian literature they say the panchatantra has the most profound influence on the world no book other than the bible enjoyed such intense world wide worldwide circulation as the panchatantra and vishnu sharma was going to create this wonder magic treaty in the next few months and he went and he took the strategy of stories stories and storytelling when words fail when narratives fail stories work and he decided well the father wanted me to teach them strategy neeti and the first thing in neeti let me start with a big bang said vishnu sharma he said the first in the neeti is not about acquisition of wealth acquisition of friends acquisition of allies but removal of friends removal of close allies removal of what you've accumulated over time and that itself occupies 44 approximately 44% of the entire book 34 almost 34 stories 34 stories only on mitra bheda and the folio that you see the picture is the frame story of karataka and damanaka the two foxes or the jackals who traveled in the world in the kalila vadimna which in the sanskrit work is karataka and damanaka and they are the tellers of the tales and they talk volumes of this story what are the stories in this chapter what are the stories and what are they telling i'm going to take three such stories and a very known tale from this story is the story of the bird which was hungry and wanted to eat all that was there in the lake and as a strategy said to the lake fishes and crabs and other species and imagine in your world what would be in a lake and that appears in the story and every time the bird transfers them to the other water body and it says that, well every time it transfers did it have a good will to help them or its own personal goals it started eating till a time the crab understood the strategy and held the throat of the bird and what happened to the bird it's a common story somewhere even in school days we would have read this story two other tales in this chapter are interesting one is about two parrots or parakeets once upon a time they say once upon a time they lived there was two birds that were born from the same family 
and the same hatchling there were two birds that were born and these two birds were parakeets and these two birds one was taken away by a thief and one was taken away by a hermit a sage and the thief took the bird and the thief in, in, in their own language used to be scolding the bird used to be giving instruction every day and whereas in the hermitage the bird was being spoken very softly softly and kindly words that could soothe words that could heal words that were important and days passed and these birds slowly grew up and as these birds grew up into full birds what happened one day a ruler came walking on the path and the ruler came walking on the path and the first bird that the ruler saw was the parakeet with the thief and the parakeet started shouting words to the king saying <laughs> you are on the rabal and the king got agitated what why well do we like a volume over us coming right into us ha and the and the ruler continued the journey and then met the second parrot which was there which was with the hermitage with the sage and there the parrot spoke very softly the parrot spoke very softly and welcomed the ruler with gifts with words with warmth and that's why they say our education good and bad the obvious consequences it had and this story like the same every story of the panchatantra it's not the story but it is the poetry and the layers and this story talks about education our education what goes in comes out and these two parrots are metaphors in the story and this other story where you see is the story of the three friends or the three cousins who stepped out why these three important how many have you seen rangde basanti or three idiots or even rk narayan's books or chetan bhagat's five points someone you will see the pattern of the three coming in many indian narratives and stories and this goes back into the first chapter of the panchatantra where it talks about three friends who stepped out to gain wealth and these three friends who stepped out to gain wealth traveled everywhere and came upon an entire bag of gems pearls corals whatever the most valuable item that they could step on and moment they saw that they realized that they can't carry them in their hand because they may lose it or they may have others coming and taking from them so they swallowed it and they said maybe we'll take it out later and this was seen by a robber a thief there are people watching our actions all the time and so this thief again gets in into the gang of the three and says can i be friends with you and goes on and they reach another village and when they reach the next village the village they get jailed because they're strangers and somebody in the village has given the news some story says it's a parrot some say it's a secret messenger and the parrot has told the village head that these three people have precious gems in their stomach you need to check them out and the village head calls the three of them and asks them left right and center do you have do you have do you have and they don't confess but the parrot still says there is something in them you need to check it out and the ruler says the village head says tomorrow morning i am going to cut your stomach open and make sure that what the parrot says is true and the three with the gems are petrified whereas the fourth who followed them had a thought 
Well, I've been a robber throughout my life. I've never been the good books of anybody. And nobody has ever, ever, ever spoken good about me. And maybe this is a time that I can sacrifice and get into the good books of somebody. I'm the robber who followed them, raises his hand and says, me first. And the village head opens the stomach and finds there's nothing hidden and releases all of them. And they all go away. And his name is there in the village for a long time. And as we move on to the next story, the tale of the second story is again not of Mitra Beda, it moves into Mitra Laba. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir, it's visible. And Mitra Laba translates into how friends are one. And once, or a place that you have to understand how the influence of one of these stories is in the state government of Karnataka. If you travel anywhere in Bangalore or Karnataka, you will come across this bird, which is a symbol of the Mysore kingdom long, long ago, which is a symbol and motive in saris of Mysore. It is there across. And this bird is called the Barunda birds. And like the two birds in the Upanishads and the Veda, the Rig Veda, it talks about the duality. And the story that goes talks about once this bird, one of the heads sees a delicious food and it eats the delicious food and doesn't give it to the other. The other is extremely angry because delicious food is shared only by one head. Mm. And a time comes when the other head spots a very poisonous food and the other head says, don't eat it, don't eat it, don't eat it. But the other head says, you didn't give me the yummy food. So why should I give you this food? And it eats the poisonous food and they both or the heads and the body slowly perish. And this in the Indian mythology appears as Ganda Berunda between Narasimha and Sharaba, Shiva and Vishnu. And this, these stories are about 17 percent, about 10 stories in this chapter. And these stories travel by telling how important it is to have friends or to make friends. And this chapter opens with a reference to the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. It says, how did Ravana fail to feel what's, that it's wrong a wife to steal? How did Rama fail to see a golden deer that could never be? How Yudhishthira failed to know gambling brings a train of war. Touching evil dims the sense of darkness. And that's the role of a friend. And even and one of the first passages talks about the tree. And what the tree does, the tree gives shelter at different parts. The tree is not the birds of animals, but the tree takes care of each of the species with warmth and love. And the most one of the most popular stories in this chapter is about the elephant and the mouse. And there is a group of elephants which trample a family of rats or mouse, which when they go on a walk and all of them gather and start complaining, saying, what will happen to us? What will happen to us? And one of them makes a representation to the elephant and the elephant says, okay, we won't come your way. And later when the elephant has a trap, they get saved by the same family, which once by mistake they trampled. And a quote in this chapter, poetry in this chapter, which says, an elephant kills by mere touch, a serpent, if he only sniffs, a king's laughter has a deadly sting, a rascal kills by honoring. Make friends, make friends, however strong or weak they may be. Another tale from this is about a hunter and a boar and a fox. Once there was a hunter who hunted a boar. And while hunting, 
the boar and if you see the boar's boar they have like the elephants that they have a little bit of tush which just protrudes from the mouth and it stands like this it pierces the hunter and hunter leaves his life on the boar and the bow and the arrow get tangled and that's when another species comes and explodes and with the joy of having the boar for lunch it eats the boar but the string of the boar tap it breaks and that animal also dies consumption of a treasure earned should be slowly and very slowly as a wise sip elixir drop it drop and not gulp it as a swallow so wait for your turn and then you will see how our food slowly consumes us and the other thing that said in this chapter is for every living being there are five fixed while still in the womb length of life fortune wealth precise moment of death and knowledge and these they say is written by the time we enter this world hmm the panchatantra talk about astrology talks about prediction about karma so this the story is simple but what it talks about is karma i repeat for every living being these five are fixed while still in the womb length of life wealth fortune precise moment of death and knowledge i continue and the third chapter the third chapter is about 20% but it's a very interesting chapter because it begins with and it's called the kakolukyam which is the crows and the owls and this crows and the owls in a very very loosely translated english would be war and peace why because it's white and black because if you see a crow it's pitch black and an owl when it opens its wing is pitch white to understand the panchatantra it's extremely important to understand the animals the birds the characteristics and their behavior and that's a, a layer of the panchatantra which sometimes is very 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 less explored and why is this to do with the mahabharata you remember the story of ashwatthama when ashwatthama wanted to attack he slept under a tree and the idea that came to him about the attack was when he saw two birds on the tree and these two birds that ashwatthama saw was the owl and the crow and that is why this chapter takes a strategical strength it takes view of what happened from the mahabharata but doesn't talk about the mahabharata at all it doesn't even mention the mahabharata but the crows and the owls get transferred one should not trust a person once once made hostile nor an enemy who has become a friend see the cave that was full of owls was burned down by the crows and the story talks about the kingdom of crows kingdom of owls and the five important strategies that's important while attacking an enemy it says you need to have sandhi you need to have vigraha you need to have yana you need to have asana or samsraya and these are different ways to attack your opponent what are these how are these is another ocean and the story like i said talks about the owls and the crows and one of the stories about a carpenter and wife well there are stories without animals and birds so once upon a time there was a carpenter and this carpenter and his wife but the carpenter somewhere didn't believe his wife and the carpenter didn't give what his wife even asked and one day the carpenter left in the morning telling his wife that he's gone to another town and sneaked behind the house and the wife who had a lover a partner that she confided with called the person home and started talking and when she did that she realized that this carpenter husband was not far away just behind the house 
And he understood, hmm, he doesn't trust me. And short she was, she said, you know what? Yesterday morning, I went to the Amman temple. I went to the Devi and I prayed for the welfare of my husband. And the Devi told me that your husband, you need to have a conversation with another man, you to bring another man to the house and sit and talk to him. And that is why I brought you into this house, man. And for no other reason, said the wife. And the carpenter was listening to this. Hmm. And the wife, <laughs> hmm. she played shrewd. She won the day. And another story talks about the bird with a golden tongue. Remember the swan and the golden egg and back in Europe? Maybe that was inspired by this story where there is a bird and it gets caught in a, in a net and it tells the hunter that I have golden tongue, so don't, 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 don't hunt me. And he takes it back home and he says that, what do we do with the, this bird? I mean, what if everybody gets to know him? So he hands it over to the kingdom and the king. And the king asks the ministers and the ministers say, hmm, what a, what, what a fool you are, king. Somebody says that there's a golden dung. Will you believe anybody? Will you believe any of your people that it's a golden dung? And they release the bird. And the bird went far away and sat on the chair and said, Purvatavataham murkaha. All appear fools to me. <laughs> the king is a fool. The minister is a fool. Everybody is a fool. And the fourth chapter, it travels into Labda Prananasam or loss and gains, which makes up about 9% of the stories and 12 stories. And one story that definitely you and me have consumed over time is the story of the crocodile and the monkey. And the crocodile and the monkey is the story. But how does the story happen? It says, Miss Crocodile says, the beloved of whom you dream with a hundred fond imagine, imaginings. Oh, you clear cheat. She alone dwells in your heart. She alone dwells in your heart and snaring with what fascinations of pretended love. What plays have I in your heart? Mock me not falling at my feet. Enough of these vain protestations falls says the wife of the crocodile and for this the end the ape or the monkey tells stories and stories in this chapter and one such tale is about a husband and wife lion and a lioness who adopt a fox a jackal and when they adopt it because in english translation the word fox and jackal have been used but is it a fox or a jackal well, you need to understand the Indian ecology. And with two cubs, they bring up the little one. And when it comes to hunt an elephant, it can't keep up with the cubs. And it asks the mother lioness, who am I? Hmm. And the last chapter, the last book of the Panchatantra is Aparikshita Karakam or hasty actions. And a verse from this appears in a Tamil literature called Silapadigaram. The word here which is and the word here talks about mongoose and And in the episode of Kovalan and Kannagi, when Kovalan yeah, sees the mangu yeah. with the blood in the mouth, what he does is a small anecdote, but the analogy used is the mangoose, which has come from the house of the snake. Silapatikaram, Tamil literature, Panchatantra. Hmm. And this is about 10%. But the beauty is, many stories in this chapter is known to all of us. Remember the story of this three Brahmins or the four Brahmins who rescue a lion back to life. The same story appears in the Vikram Betal in the 22nd story. And when the Betal asks Vikram Aditya, <laughs> who of these do you think is a fool? And the king says, the one who gave life to the lion. Because what is dead is dead. 
don't bring it back. And that's one story. And there are other stories that we are sure that we've consumed. It's a story of the daydreaming Brahman, the one who dreams of the pot and kicks the pot and the pot falls down. And the, as that sings and gets caught. And this chapter has traveled the world and everywhere it's gone, the snake has replaced, the mongoose and the snake has replaced, has been replaced by tigers, by other carnivorous creatures, but the storyline has remained the same. And with that, where did it all begin? It began with Purnabhadra, who was a Jain monk who wanted to bring back these into the Indian context and started studying the texts which travel the world. And he started translating them back into Sanskrit and back into, slowly started into other Indian languages. And over time, in the early 1900s, there were scholars, Dr. Hertel and Dr. Benfrey, who started looking at them again from a Western lens and started translating them into English. But today, we don't have the oldest Sanskrit or the oldest Pahalvi. We only have the translation. It's gone around the world and today it's come back. Maybe it's there in your house, it's there in your bookshelf. But the original, nobody knows. They say there was a bit pie, there was a watch pie, Vidyapati, and the stories have traveled. And this snapshot, if you want to look carefully, it'll tell you from where it's traveled because they say the city of Amara Shakti was in Kishmi called Mahila Ropia. And from Kashmir, it's traveled across to northwestern India. It's gone across to Tamil down south. And it's taken forms into even the Hitopadesha. And when it's gone into the Jataka, it was mellowed down and it became softer narratives because the purpose of Jataka was a little different to the Panchatantra. But today, if you go to any museum, you go to open any of your textile, you might find an animal motive or a bird motive. And that somewhere could be from the Panchatantra, they say. And why is the Panchatantra so important? It follows what we say in psychology, the nested loop principle. In it says how stories within stories are particularly effective for the therapeutic change. For delivering embedded commands, although any character in a story can deliver embedded commands. And that's what the Panchatantra is. To understand the first story, we need to go to the second story. To understand the second story, we need to go to the third story. And to understand the third story, we have to come back to the second story and then come back to the first story. And by the time, our consciousness is triggered. And is the Panchatantra complete? It'll never be. It never was. It's always a work in progress, like many, many, many Indic texts, which has been lost in translation and gained different faces and it's come back. And today, maybe a hundred years later, the Panchatantra will have stories that you and me haven't read till now. That where I end the Panchatantra explores. I hope you explore the text a little more than children's literature. You appreciate the continuum in Indic oral literature and also the most powerful usage of nature and ecology that's embedded in these tales to talk about human beings and psychology, which otherwise would be very, 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 very boring. You know? And like it says, the original text of Burzo and the Sanskrit, nobody knows where it is. But what we have is versions that have gone and taken time. And if you want to start somewhere, these could be the starting point, but I believe you can finish it in two days or 200 days or 20,000 days. It depends on your journey. And that's where I say, if you watch a Tom and Jerry, maybe the Tom and Jerry would have been inspired by the Panchatantra. Thank you.